Right then folks, this week a full review on the held air and dry gloves, the beast from the east, Nikki passing her CBT and the 2018 London Bike Show. Let's go! Well folks, first off, let's have a look at these gloves, the Held Air and Dry 2-in-1 gloves. I've been wearing these for about a good thousand odd miles now, and I've got to say, I do like them. There's a couple of issues that I have with them so far, but all in all, a very good glove. So the main selling point of these gloves is the 2-in-1 system that it has here. We have two inners to these gloves, the dry section, which gives you a totally waterproof and warmer glove and the focus breezy section which gives you a much lighter uh, a perforated lining on the palm of the gloves there but you also get full protection across the knuckles so it's almost like a two-in-one not quite a summer glove not quite a full winter glove but it gives you somewhere in between the best of both worlds so let's run down the spec on the glove itself these are typical held qualities good German company top quality materials used here and it is at your higher end price range of glove it's DuPont Cordura leather detailed back with a highly abrasion resistant kangaroo leather palm the water Waterproof compartment, has a peak push-pull lining, Gore-Tex membrane, a Gore 2-in-1 technology which means one side waterproof, one side unlined, Velcro adjustment at the wrists and cuffs, perforated leather back, perforated hand for maximum ventilation, feel and comfort, stretch fabric panels on the back, it even has a visor wiper, super fabric reinforcement on the edge of the hand. It's got lots of armor across the knuckles, across the fingers, the wrists, and it's even got some 3M scotch light reflectors. Now, disclaimer. I was given these gloves by motorcentral.co.uk to review, but I told them I would be giving you my no BS verdict. And that's exactly what this is. Now I like the gloves, I definitely do like the gloves. They retail for £165, which is expensive by some standards. When you consider the Knox Handroids, they're retailing for around about 180 200 quid now, as are some of the Dionysi and Alpine Stars gloves. Up at the top end of the scale, £165 is about what you'd expect to pay for the top end gloves. Do they perform like a top end glove? Yeah, I'd say they definitely do. They're not infallible in the cold weather. We've had the beast from the east hitting us this week with temperatures down to minus 12. So no amount of heated grips are going to stop your hands getting cold in that sort of temperature with these gloves. But in normal sort of winter conditions I've found the gloves perfectly adequate with heated grips. Without heated grips the cold will eventually get in. My main concern with these gloves is the tightness around the wrist. Now these only come with one wrist strap not two, I know the Knox Androids have two either, either side there. Now I measured my hand the way I was told to and I was given what held say are the right size for that measurement. But I personally would go a size up, they felt a little bit tight but that does ease over time. They are however tight around the wrist. Now these are designed not as gauntlet gloves, so they're designed to go under their jacket. I always wear mine over my jacket so I find that a little bit of a pain in the bum having to fiddle around and get the gloves under the jacket every time. They're not quite tight enough to get under the jacket easily and they're not loose enough to go over the jacket easily. So I found it a bit of a fiddle putting them on and off. That said, they're incredibly comfortable. You get a really good feel for the controls and the handlebars when you're wearing them, even in the winter section, not just the breezy section. I found them thin enough so that I get the benefit of the heated grips coming through, but not too thick that I can't feel any of the controls and I don't get the benefit of the heated grips. Without heated grips, I think your hands would definitely get cold eventually, but there's not many gloves out there outside of heated gloves that's going to give you 100% protection from the cold no matter what the weather. I think they're certainly a stylish looking glove. They come in two colours. One is the grey and black and the other is all black. As I said, they retail for £164.99 on motocentral.co.uk. Links are down below. They come in a long version, a short version and also a ladies version. For some reason, the ladies version is £174.99. But you get a two year warranty with the Hell gloves no matter what one you get. Check out the link down below to buy over at motocentral.co.uk. All in, would I spend my hard-earned £165 on these gloves? No, but only 
because my glove of choice has to be the Knox. I wear the Knox Androids pretty much 90% of the year and if it's mega cold or wet, I'll have the Knox out dry two gloves. But again, they're at the higher end of the market. They are around about 180, 200 pounds a pair and you're having to take two pairs away with you. But that's just my personal choice. These are a good glove. I think they're worth 165 quid. And if you're in the market for an all year round touring glove held air and dry two in one, Gets the teapot thumbs up. Never too old for orange juice. Let's go. Always milk first. Right, wifey, what have you done? My CBT. Speak up. My CBT. Why did you do it? Because somebody in this house has got to know how to ride a bike properly. Oh, savage. Without falling off all the time. <laughs> we didn't discuss that. Right, yeah, so you've just done your CBT. You've hit a certain age. There's things that you wanted to do and that was on the list, yeah? Yeah. So you did it with Phoenix Motorcycle Training over in, was it Sidcup? Yeah, we went to Sidcup. And it was Baltic. It, it was, was January. It was freezing. It was freezing. What did you think? I loved it, I really enjoyed it. Took a little while um, to get used to it because I've been driving since I was 17 so you're just used to being safe in your car. But yeah, it was good, I did enjoy it. Recommend it to other people? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I didn't do it on the first day because I didn't feel confident to go out on the road. Just another extra couple of hours practicing and then going back on doing it another day. I felt a lot better with it. But you didn't feel any pressure to, to make no, sure you did it? No, not at all, no, not at all. Awesome. No, it was really good. Um, the staff were brilliant, really good, really friendly, really helpful, very patient, not just with us, but with everybody. And are you going to go ahead and do the next stage, direct access or mod one, mod two? Maybe. I might get a bike when it's warmer, because I think I'm probably going to be a fair weather rider, and I might use it just for commuting down to the station and stuff to start with. What I got from that is new bike shopping. Right folks, I'll put the link down below for Phoenix Motorcycle Training. They're all over the country. They've got units everywhere. Check them out if you're thinking of doing your CBT, your Mod 1, your Mod 2 or your Direct Access. Well worth checking out. Oh, mind the seat. Oh. Well, morning folks. So today we are heading off Put them in the dry. We are heading off to the Excel London Motorcycle Show. I'm going to try and put these gloves on under my jacket. I just cannot see how that is going to happen because you can't get the jacket far enough up. Or can you? Let's try that. Will it go over? Oh, yeah, it does. All right, Gus, I'll give you that. <sighs> my mate Gus pointed this out to me last night. Why don't you just put it under the sleeve? Oh, never thought of that. This is going to be the tricky one. So I'll put it in the dry section. Operator error, as usual. Alright, can we get this over? Oh, this one's tight. I thought this one would be the pain in the bum. There we go. So, yeah, we are now off for day one of the London Motorcycle Show at the XL. And Nathan Millward's very kindly invited me along to the adventure zone again. This year I'm talking about packing, how to pack. It's more of an informal chat really. Good lad Nathan, I like him a lot, I've done a couple of videos with him. Very chilled out, very relaxed, just the way I like it. Ooh, this looks cold. Two degrees, awesome. Jeez, that is slidey. God, I've not even had the gritters out. Why would you need gritters? It's only, it's only February. Where does my tax money go in this country? Where does it go? Right, we are on the road again. Let's see what the weekend brings.
into us, the chaps from, uh, if you're following them on Twitter, at RAF100 Station, Ian and Marcus. So here they are, they're going to tell you a little bit about what they're doing. Afternoon guys, uh, my name's Ian, this is Marcus, we're from right. the RAF100 Station. A bit about us is the charity ride for the RAF100 Appeal, which is the anniversary, the 100th anniversary of the RAF. Basically we're doing a bit of an adventure ride, backed by Honda, to conquer 4,000 miles around the UK, visiting 100 RAF stations, plus four bonus visits. And where can people find you? And follow you. Uh, so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of the same handle at one RF100 stations. Awesome lads, all the best to you. Thank you very much. And Thank you're you. finishing at the Ace Calf, aren't you? Yes, yeah, yeah, Cafe. What's the date you're doing it? 25th of July, and it'll be around about nine o'clock. Awesome. In the evening. Folks, that'll do us this week. A massive thank you to everyone that's come on board on Patreon and joined the clan. Really do appreciate your support. If you enjoyed the vid, smash the subscribe button, hit the like and share away. Folks, keep on checking out the shop, teapot1.com. The books are nearly over. When they're gone, they are gone. And there's going to be a whole load of new merch released soon. Until next time, keep living your life.